Yo, my name is John and I am a music photographer, videographer based in Los Angeles, California. And today we are editing your concert photos again. So a while ago, I asked you all on Twitter to submit photos that you would like for me to edit in a upcoming YouTube video. And well, it took some time, but uh, this, this is that video. <laughs> All of the edits that we're gonna do in this video are just my takes on your photography. I'm in no way saying that I'm making the photography better with these edits. I am definitely not saying that this is the right way to edit these photos versus the wrong way to edit these photos. I'm just gonna be sharing my approach with all of these shots. And boy, did we get a lot of shots for this video, which brings me to my second point. This is not going to be a tutorial video. I'm not gonna be getting into all the different Lightroom panels and all of the different sliders and buttons and masks and things like that. There's just simply not enough time to, uh, to do that in this particular video. And in order to get to as many photos as possible, I'm really gonna be focusing on the why I chose to go with a certain edit as opposed to how I got to that edit. That being said, if you do find something particularly interesting that you see in this video and would like further explanation or maybe a dedicated video related to whatever it is that you found interesting, just let me know in the comments. That's all you have to do. Okay, that should be it. Let's jump in. Okay, so our first submission comes from Haley Knight. Here's a raw shot from a Neck Deep concert a few months back. I'd love to see your take on it. Thanks, Haley. So this is the shot of Ben from Neck Deep, and it looks like they're in a club of some kind, which are notoriously known for being dark, even for Sony cameras. So I popped a little Lightroom denoise on this image before getting all of the exposure settings right. Just something to kind of clean it up and uh, make it a little bit easier to uh, work with, especially if we're gonna be pushing those shadows and those black levels. And then from there, I use the curves to lift those black levels and crush the white levels to give us a more moody, almost fake type of look. Then with the HSL panel, I really wanted all the different hues and tones of this image to feel a little bit more cohesive and clean. Like by getting rid of that nasty biohazard green yellow light that's going on in the background um, and warming it up to match the warmth of the rest of the photo, my condolences to the LD. <laughs> then with the color grading wheels, I really wanted to lock in a nice grade by countering all of the warmth that we added with a little cool blue in those mid-tones, which really shows up in the whites of his clothing and like the highlights of the lights in the background. Then with a couple of masks, I wanted to give a bit more separation between Ben and the background by darkening that back area and brightening him. And then we'll pop it into Photoshop where we will further clean up the image by removing some of what I would consider to be distracting elements in the background, which is something that I've talked about in my channel in the past. But in 2024, we're gonna be doing it at blazing speeds thanks to Photoshop's generative fill AI tool. Okay, and I'll pause for just a second to say that I don't really want this to turn into like an AI debate and the whole like ethics of using it in your workflow. Personally, I find this implementation of it being used more as a tool than anything else, which is wildly useful for me and what I do <laughs> every single day. So if you don't prefer that, that's totally cool with me. You do you, no issues there. Just be warned that it will be mentioned again later in this video, so just... Yeah, anyway, back to the edit. And then lastly, I'll throw in a little bit of grain, extend the background a bit more, and then top it all off with some dodge and burn to really get the details in his clothing to pop out a little bit more. And with that, we have our first before and after. Boom, I dig it. Thanks so much again, Haley, for sending this in, and uh, I hope you dig it too. All right, next one. Okay, this one comes from Kira Lindgren. Hey, saw you were looking for raw photos to edit in a YouTube video and thought I'd send one over. Have a great week. So like last time, I mostly play around with the HSL and color grading panels until I get something that looks pretty vibrant but still flattering because this time we have a lot of skin tone to uh, be conscious of. But unlike the last edit, I don't want to denoise this shot at all because it doesn't really need that. But instead, I'll use the denoise panel to use Lightroom's super resolution tool because I plan on cropping in on this photo like pretty significantly. And by doing that, we run the risk of losing a lot of detail and like a lot of the sharpness in the image. 
So with the super resolution tool, we are effectively doubling the pixel count in the photo. So now I can punch into an edit like this a lot more without losing much quality. Then adding some gradient masks to the top and bottom of the background to really lean into this like natural gradient glow that we already have in the raw photo. And then pop on a small mask on her face to help even out that lighting and kind of lessen the potentially distracting or maybe unflattering shadows on her face. And then we go back into Photoshop. I'm gonna take a minute to clean up some flyaways that we're gonna see here on her face and like in her hair, just with the healing brush tool for all of the like finer hairs. And then keep in mind, this is just my preference. It would totally be natural and normal for a performer to have like flyaways and have their hair kind of like blowing in the wind, especially if it's an outdoor performance, which I don't know if that's the case here, but you get what I mean. It's all optional. And then once I've got that nice and cleaned up to my liking, we gotta figure out a good crop for this shot, which I'm gonna go with the portrait orientation because, well, it's a portrait edit. And definitely not because that's just what happens to work best on social media. Nah, I would never, I would never use that as a basis for my, uh, my artistic uh, decision making. <laughs> the Instagram portrait aspect ratio is 4-5, just in case you wanted to know that. So I'm gonna go in and add a really strong glow layer on top of everything and mask out important details like her eyes and her hair and her face just by using a layer mask and using the brush tool. Then I'm gonna add in some grain into the mix just to kind of bring back some of the texture that we may have lost by adding that glow slash blur layer. Then I'll go around and just do some more spot correction for some minor details and then finally finish everything off with some dodging and burning to really make everything pop. And with that, we have our second before and after. Awesome. Thank you, Kira, for sending this in. This is a sick shot and I'm pretty stoked on how it turned out. So appreciate it. All right, next one. Okay, this shot comes from Amelia Polis. Police? Police? Po Polize. Police? Police? Amelia, thank you for sending this in. Now, first off, this is Sophie Powers shout out. And secondly, looking at our details here, we can see that this was shot at 8,000 ISO in a pretty dark room. So uh, yeah, naturally there's going to be a lot of noise, but still looking at the details, I noticed that your shutter speed was set to one over 1,000th of a second, which is extremely fast. Not really the, the area of shutter speed that you'd probably want in like a setting like this, because it doesn't really allow for like a lot of light to get into your camera. Honestly, if you had it at at like maybe one over two fiftieths of a second or even like one over two hundredths, you could have gotten that ISO a lot lower than where it's at right now, but uh, but it's already shot. So we're gonna take it into Lightroom Denoise again. <laughs> so this one felt like it would just be a naturally good black and white edit. And from here, I really wanna crank up that contrast and clarity just to kind of get as much detail and match the energy as much as possible. And I could do that by messing around in the basic panel and the tone curve panel to uh, just try and get a really solid contrast. Then gonna hop over to Photoshop again, and I'm gonna use the generative fill again, but this time it's gonna be doing some real heavy lifting here, and it's gonna do that by taking out this fellow photographer. It's also gonna help me with just cleaning up some of the details of the stage and everything in the background. And then lastly, I want to expand that background a bit more to adjust the framing a little bit. And then I'm gonna use some more dodging and burning to really make the make the outfit pop a bit more. Um, I'm gonna really lean into the shininess of her pants and uh, all the like little details of her like hair clip and accessories and just kind of add a bit more definition uh, by doing this. And then once I'm happy with that, I can call it a day. Okay, so we have the before and after. Great shot, great energy, great submission. Thanks again, Amelia, for sending this in. I appreciate it. All right, this one comes from Beck Bourne. Hey, John, I saw your call out on Twitter for unedited raw concert photos that you can edit for an upcoming YouTube video and wanted to submit a few of mine. All photos were taken at local Australian festivals. Shout out to all the Aussies out there. I love Australia and I, and I cannot wait to go back. Keen to see what you come up with, keen. So Australian. But there is a reason why I picked this photo in particular. One, I think it's important to point out that when shooting a show, it can be a very, very good practice to not just capture the artists themselves, but also the environment and the setting and all of the like little details that makes up the entirety of the show. The variety can go a really long way, especially with publications. And secondly, 
I'd like to show just how easy it was to edit this photo using one of my presets called Summertime. Yeah, this is gonna be a plug. I have a concert preset pack that just got released, and one of those presets called Summertime is actually perfect for an outdoor festival setting like this. There's also seven other dynamic presets that are designed for all kinds of lighting and different color situations. You can learn more about that by just going to john.co slash presets and just kind of like take a look around for yourself. But yeah, getting back to this photo specifically, Summertime works perfectly for this, so we're gonna throw Summertime on. And then once I do that, the the only thing I really have to do is lower the exposure a little bit, tweak the white balance some, and maybe tiny touch of saturation, and then it's done. It literally makes it just so easy and so quick. So yeah, go and check out the rest if you'd like. I'll leave a link down below, of course. And as a thank you for listening to that shameless plug, I'm going to give you a bonus tip. Did you know that Photoshop has a built-in sky replacement tool that's called sky, re sky replacement? Well, if you didn't, now you do. And it's also extremely easy to use and really helps make some nice dynamic edits to your photos, especially if like, let's say like today, for example, we don't really have a lot going on in the sky. Go through, pick one that fits the vibe you're looking for, hit save, throw it back into Lightroom where you can make any last minute little adjustments that you'd want. And then you get another bonus tip. Did you know, God, this wasn't supposed to be a tutorial. You know how I've been using Photoshop for all of those like generative fill edits that I've been doing? Well, did you know that Adobe actually brought that same tool into Lightroom in their most recent update? So without having to go into Photoshop and introducing that extra step, I can just go down here, use this little eraser tool, highlight everything that I want gone, and then it will just generative fill that out of existence. Boom, like it was never even there. All right, so we have the before, and the after. So yeah, thank you Beck for sending this in. I think it was a great idea to include a shot like this in this series. So yeah, awesome. Okay, next one. All right, this one comes from Paisley Kinnon. Hey John, my name is Paisley Kinnon and this is my photo for you to edit for YouTube. Good luck with the video. Thank you, Paisley. All right, so this is another solid shot of an artist, which uh, appears to be in like a smaller venue of some sort. But with this one, we have some really solid lighting and color straight out of camera. So I really want to lean into the richness that we're getting with these blues and these greens and uh, in addition to the warmer lighting that we're getting on his face. So I'm going to spend some time in the HSL and color grading panels and just kind of mess around until I find something that feels good to me. And then with this photo, I decided to get a little crazy and uh, throw on some Lightroom lens blur to really make that background even more soft and out of focus, which uh, in turn really emphasizes the focus on the artist here. Helps with that like separation that I was talking about in one of the earlier edits. And then I'll bring it back into Photoshop and top it off with the similar dreamy style edit that, uh, that we did with Sabrina earlier. And I'll do that by adding a blur layer on top, lowering its opacity, and adding some grain for that texture. But I'll take the texture a step further and throw on a texture overlay. And once I found one that I like, I'll choose a blending mode that fits the style of this photo and uh, lower its opacity, basically just until it looks good to me. And then use another layer mask and brush tool to, to bring the details back on his face and also remove some of that texture layer on top of his face to keep things nice and clear and clean and not distracting from, uh, from him. I like these kinds of edits every now and then. It gives a completely different vibe and feel to what to what I thought was already a pretty good photo. I just thought the faded distress style just kind of felt right for me. But with that, we're done. Here's the before and the after. Thank you again, Paisley, for sending this one in. I hope you like it. All right, and now it's time for the last photo. And I hope that you're still with me because this next one is, um, it's a doozy. Now to wrap things up, we have this shot of Ollie Sykes from Bring Me the Horizon, and this was sent in from Bryn Evita. Hey John, can't wait to see what you come up with. And again, I'm gonna do a little pre-pro on this shot with the uh, with the denoise panel inside of Lightroom, but I'm also gonna take this into the Nick Collection raw pre-sharpening software just to kind of help clean up some of the details here. We also have a bunch of really sweet stage haze in the background that just looks like a bunch of clouds. So I'm definitely gonna lean into highlighting those with uh, with our masking tools. I unfortunately made the mistake of accidentally lowering the background exposure a bit too much. And now I'm kind of stuck with an analysis paralysis situation because I kind of really like how this looks too. 
but I've already spent so much time on like that brighter, more like heavenly type of edit. So uh, we're, I think we're just gonna commit to that. We're just gonna we're just gonna go with the lighter edit. Also, hey, I know that guy. That's Christian. He's a uh, he's a phenomenal photographer and probably the nicest guy you'll ever meet. So uh, I'm gonna drop his information down below. Go check his stuff out. He's so good at what he does. And um, yeah, give him a, give him a follow. Tell him I said hi. Okay, from here, I'm gonna wrap things up with the usual dodge and burn, as well as adding some grain layers for that sweet, sweet texture. Go through and darken some of the details on his shirt to really highlight all of the uh, designs and like his tattoos and kind of go in and really bump up the pink on his shoe because I think that looks sick. And then with a combination of generative fill and just good old fashioned photoshopping skills, I'm gonna clean up the bottom of the frame and extend the stage all the way across just to try and get a bit of a cleaner look. And then with that, I think we have a pretty solid shot. And this is where you would expect me to be done with this photo because that's usually my like workflow for editing photos like this. But you'd be wrong because I can't stop thinking about the dark version of this edit that we saw earlier. <laughs> and to hopefully satisfy my curiosity, I am... Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do a dark version edit of this photo just because I, I just like, I don't know, it, it it could be better, I'm not sure. But honestly, I've already spent so much time on all of these edits that I'm just gonna do a very rough pass and just kind of just, I don't know, just get the general idea of everything just here just so I can kind of compare and contrast between the two. And um, once I finally get it to a spot that looks fairly good, or at least good enough, I can confidently say that I, um, I still can't decide which one I like more. Which, unfortunately, happens a lot more often than I'd care to admit. So I don't know, you let me know down in the comments which one you thought was better, or at least which one you liked more, and most importantly, which one you'd be more likely to double tap while mindlessly doom scrolling on your little phones. Because, again, that's what this is all about. All right, to wrap this up, we have our final before and after. And after. But yeah, thanks again, Bryn, for sending this photo in. And also, shout out to Bryn, who has been in this community for quite some time now, and they've been just extremely supportive of me and this channel and everything that I do. So um, yeah, big shout out to Bryn. Go check them out. And while you're at it, go ahead and check out all of the photographers that were featured today. Uh, I will have all of their links listed down below and show each other some support. Go and check it out. Go and follow some new photographers and go and see, you know, what other people are doing in the scene. So yeah, thanks again to everyone that submitted for this video. And with that concludes our second ever editing your concert photography video. Thank you all so much for watching and thank you very much to all the photographers that sent photos in for this video. I seriously got so many great submissions and um, I'm just unfortunately not able to get to all of them in one single take. But if this video does relatively well, then I might go ahead and make a third video in this series at some point in the future, eventually. But that means that if you're still here and watching this video right now that you kind of have to subscribe and like the video and uh, show some love down in the comments. That's just kind of how it is, you know? It's, it's, uh, it's just, it's the rules. I don't make them or enforce them or anything like that. Yeah, I don't know, do whatever you want. I don't know, it's fun. But for real, leave a comment down below with any thoughts or feedback that you have on the video or any of the edits that we did in the video. I love reading and responding to all of those. So uh, yeah, come say hi. And once again, feel free to check out my website, which is just john.co, where you can learn a bit more about the concert photography presets that I offer, as well as see some of my work that I have up there. Or check out my store, shop.john.co, where you can pick up said presets in addition to some photography prints and some merch of mine, not completely unlike this hoodie that I'm wearing currently right now. It's truly a great way to support me and this channel and just kind of allows me to continue doing and making these. But either way, thanks for watching. Follow me everywhere at John on everything, and I will see you all in the next one. All right, peace.